Hydrofluoric acid, most commonly referred to as HF, is used at many of our ASU campuses. It is a versatile tool researchers use to prepare surfaces, dissolve specimens, etch oxides and silicates, clean silicon wafers, and generate chemical reactions. Among acids commonly used in laboratories, HF is a particularly hazardous and toxic substance and is unique in its means of attack on human tissue and other materials. While this makes HF an effective tool, it also means we must prepare accordingly to prevent exposure. ASU's Macro Technology Works, or MTW, is a unique research facility providing ASU with the ability to advance research in partnership with private industry. It has clean rooms, wet labs, dry labs, high bay space, and office accommodations. Among the ASU users of this facility are the IRA A, Fulton Schools of Engineering, the School of Molecular Sciences, and the Department of Physics. ASU Solar Power Lab serves as a staging ground for the new technologies and ideas that will move us forward in our quest for a more sustainable society in photovoltaics and the physics that govern them. Other notable users of hydrofluoric acid are ASU School of Molecular Sciences where it is used for wet chemical etching of semiconductor surfaces to prepare them for subsequent chemical processing. The School of Earth and Space Exploration commonly uses hydrofluoric acid to solubilize silicate materials, volatilizing the silicon and enabling the isolation of single elements. Hydrofluoric acid is unique among hazardous chemicals, therefore must always be handled within a fume hood. It is a colorless corrosive liquid and in low concentrations it is virtually indistinguishable from water. Other unique hazards and characteristics include extreme toxicity easily passes through tissue on contact. The onset of pain following exposure can be delayed. Damage to lungs and corneas of the eyes. Destructive to deep tissue and bone. According to Honeywell, more than 70% of all HF exposures involve the hands, specifically the digits. Upon skin exposure to solutions of HF less than 20% concentration, immediate corrosive destruction does not occur and there may be no immediate pain or tissue destruction. HF is a highly lipophilic, fat-loving molecule and readily penetrates deep into tissue, easily passing through the epidermis, dermis, and subcutaneous layers. HF then wreaks havoc by releasing its acidic hydrogen ion and fluorine ion in the presence of calcium and magnesium cations, interfering with cellular metabolism causing cellular death and necrosis of deep tissue. If that is not enough, the fluorine ion's high affinity for calcium and magnesium may exceed the body's ability to mobilize replacement quantities, and systemic toxicity occurs in the form of hypocalcemia. Significant calcium deficiency, or hypocalcemia, may interfere with normal nerve function and cause potentially life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias. Therefore, exposure prevention is key, and if exposed, immediate medical treatment is critical to avoid severe health effects. HF is incompatible with many things commonly found in labs. HF attacks silica-laden materials such as glass, clay, pottery, and concrete. For the same reason, the yellow laboratory spill kits cannot be used for HF spill control. HF will react with metals and metal oxides to form explosive hydrogen gas. Chemical bases, strong oxidizing agents, alcohols, amines, leather, and some types of rubber will also react with HF. Unless your lab has written procedure, contact with these materials must be avoided. Verify only compatible materials remain in your workspace. Prior to purchasing, carefully consider the volume of HF you are able to safely store. Purchase and use the concentration of HF required for your experiment to avoid an unnecessary risk associated with dilution. HF must be stored in approved vented cabinets, separate from incompatibles. Secondary containment is highly recommended. When ordering HF, assess your HF-specific spill kit and verify your antidote supply is adequate and within the expiration date. HF waste must be collected in plastic containers, which are purchased and provided by laboratory management. Recommended waste containers must be leak-proof and compatible. Follow your laboratory's standard operating procedure, or SOP, when collecting hazardous waste. It is best practice that all HF labs assemble an emergency medicine information folder which would accompany the victim or emergency responders to the hospital. Information about how to assemble this folder for your laboratory is available in the course resources folder.
Verify your lab has a designated use area equipped with engineering controls for HF. All HF work must be conducted within this area. Your work area must be free of incompatible materials unless your SOP states otherwise. Familiarize yourself with the lab-specific SOP for HF use. Your lab's SOP will contain important step-by-step -step guidance, personal protective equipment, or PPE, information and hazard warnings. Consult your lab safety data sheet, or SDS, for information pertaining to the unique characteristics, hazards, PPE, storage, and additional safety-related information associated with HF. If unsure about any of the content, check with your supervisor before proceeding. HF spill kit shall include fluoride strips, compatible absorbent material, HF-specific neutralizing agent, personal protective equipment, and waste collection containers. Information about how to purchase an HF spill kit and antidote is provided in the course resources folder. In case of an emergency, you must know the location of your lab's HF antidote. Two types of the antidotes are used at ASU calcium gluconate gel and benzalkonium chloride solution. Calcium gluconate is the most common. Antidotes will reside in close proximity to an HF work area. It is important to never work alone in the lab when working with HF. Prior to beginning your work, check the expiration date and that the HF antidote is within your area. Physically check your calcium gluconate gel for squishiness. Locate the nearest emergency shower and eye wash to be familiar with the operation of each. It is important to make sure your PPE completely protects you from a potential HF exposure at all times. This is particularly applicable when it comes to protecting your hands and wrists. Factors to consider in glove selection are the HF concentration, the potential duration of exposure, and the manual dexterity requirements. We highly recommend you check your SOP for appropriate glove selection. If additional information is needed, contact the glove manufacturer regarding your glove preference. If still unsure of glove selection, contact EHNS at ehns at asu.edu. Each set of gloves must be inspected prior to use. Checking for defects such as holes or tears. HF permeates many types of glove materials aggressively. Therefore, using a compatible glove type is critical. For example, HF permeates PVA gloves in a matter of minutes versus neoprene, which offers greater protection. It is strongly recommended you double glove whenever working with HF. If you must reach within the hood, make sure beforehand that your PPE sufficiently covers your arms and wrist when extended. Prior to entering the lab, make sure you are wearing full-length pants and closed-toe shoes. Once in the lab, don the appropriate PPE beginning with your initial set of gloves, eye protection, and face shield. A clean room gown may be substituted for a lab coat. Either can be worn under an acid-resistant apron if there is potential for an HF splash. Your supervisor may perform a PPE assessment for handling HF in your labs, which may exceed the minimum approved ASU PPE. A face shield is required even when working within a fume hood. Make sure it is in good condition prior to use and adjust the size to ensure a secure fit. Standard manufacturer labeling includes the product name and primary hazards. When preparing the label for a secondary container, you must write the words hydrofluoric acid along the concentration and the words highly toxic and corrosive. HF must be stored in approved corrosive storage cabinets. Before accessing HF storage, make sure you have donned the required PPE. Read the labels for container contents and hazard warnings prior to removal. ASU researchers typically use a variety of HF concentrations between 1% and 49%. Store HF with the label visible upon opening the cabinet doors to avoid unnecessary handling or potentially removing the wrong container. When transporting HF, it is preferred that the unopened container remains in the manufacturer's shipping box. If you must transport an already opened container of HF, use a standard acid carrier or a cart with a lip on all sides. Bring the appropriate absorbent spill kit materials, a tube of antidote, and PPE with you during transport, as well as a buddy whenever possible. If transporting small quantities in a sealed container short distances within your lab, ensure no trip hazards are present. Use an approved secondary transport container when transporting HF or any other corrosive acid within your immediate work area. Make sure your walkway is clear and free of obstructions and alert other lab users to your actions. Carefully remove the container at your destination. 
In the clean room areas with visible underfloor plumbing, HF solutions are transported throughout the facility to be used at the wet benches and the fab areas. However, most ASU facilities do not offer this service and manual transportation procedures must be followed. When working with HF, maintain a healthy respect for HF hazards, even when following a rinse step in your procedure, as HF may still be present on any and all surfaces. If you are working with HF at a wet bench, use the available water nozzle to spray down the work area. When collecting HF waste, verify the contents added are compatible. Clean up your workstation immediately upon completion of your work, ensuring no residue remains. Wipe up all spills immediately and discard all contaminated cleanup materials safely in the appropriate waste container. HF contaminant waste must never be discarded with regular trash. Use automated glove rinsing if available in the work area and make sure to carefully dry your gloves before removing them. Otherwise, follow your lab specific procedure for glove rinsing, drying and removal. Carefully remove your PPE and discard and or store per your lab specific procedure. Regardless of the approved type of gloves, remove the outer set of gloves after careful inspection for damage. While wearing the inner set of clean gloves, remove your face shield. Discard disposable gloves appropriately. If using reusable gloves, adequately rinse and dry prior to storing them. Using your fingers, pinch the outside of each sleeve of the acid apron or safety sleeves and pull them away from your arms. Tip your head forward as you grab the acid apron near the collar. Carefully remove your gloves while avoiding direct skin contact and lift the apron ties over your head. Careful not to touch the apron to your face. Then hang or carefully roll the apron for next use after inspecting for damage. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water before leaving the lab. If an HF spill occurs, regardless of concentration, consideration for cleanup should be evaluated based on personal experience, location, volume, and concentration of the spilled acid. If you choose to mitigate or clean up the spill, follow the steps outlined in your SOP utilizing your lab's HF spill kit and notify your supervisor. If you are still not comfortable, immediately contact ASU EHNS to perform the cleanup. Should HF come in contact with your glove, carefully remove both gloves and as a precaution, rinse the potentially affected area for five minutes. If you suspect permeation through a glove tear, utilize your available antidote and call 911. In the event HF contacts your skin, remove all the contaminated clothing immediately within seconds. Flush affected area for five minutes, followed immediately with the application of the antidote and immediate medical attention. Quick and correct action is critical if exposed to HF. Call 911. Call EHNS at 480-965-1823. Since you should not be working alone with HF without supervisor approval, a fellow researcher should follow this procedure. If your first aid measure includes benzalkonium chloride, or BKC, while the victim is performing the five minute rinse, Remove the BKC kit from the refrigerator and mix the BKC according to manufacturer guidance. BKC is limited to the parts of the body that can be submerged into the mixed solution container. Following a five minute water rinse of the affected area, the skin surface is dried and the antidote applied. Depending on your lab's SOP, this could be calcium gluconate gel or an ice solution of BKC. The coordinary ammonium-based BKC solution carries its own chlorine ion to exchange for the damaging fluorine ions in the tissue while the cold solution works to constrict blood and limb vessels, slowing the further passage of the fluorine ion. The application of calcium gluconate gel antidote provides a positively charged calcium cations that race after the destructive fluorine ions, gobbling them up to form non-toxic calcium fluoride, which is safely flushed from the body. For areas of the body that are impractical for the BKC antidote, calcium gluconate is the antidote of choice. Wearing compatible gloves, massage calcium gluconate gel onto the affected area. Reapply every 15 minutes until medical help arrives. HF is a necessary and vital acid for several research purposes, from etch and cleaning semiconductors to removing silicates from asteroids. It must always be treated with respect. However, even with all the protective measures adhered to standard operating procedures and proper PPE, accidents can still happen.
so you need to know the emergency procedures instinctively thereby acting quickly and properly to mitigate any serious health effects.